All right, we're ready to start. I just want to introduce our new member to the family, little Miss Poppy. And uh, this is all I'm going to show her because she can upstage me. So what we're doing today, of course, is a transparent watercolor. This is the photograph that we're using. We did send this out along with the drawing if you want to do a paint along while I'm painting. But this is a small cottage up in the north woods, not too far from our log cabin up there. So if we can get started here. So I want you to say hi to Bud, Ann, Linda, and Deb. Hello, everybody. Glad you could join us today. So we have a snow scene. And the snow scenes, uh, what you have to remember is that Anything white, whether it be snow, white dresses, white shirts, white building, they get they are cooler in the foreground and they get warmer as they go back. Uh, everything else is warmer in the foreground and gets cooler as it goes back. So you have kind of a reverse thing going on here with a white object or the white snow along with the rest of everything else. So what we're going to do is I'm going to start off by painting the sky. The colors we're using today are manganese blue, ultramarine blue, raw sienna, burnt sienna. Um, I'm using cobalt violet, which is not a necessary thing to have on your palette, but I thought I'd introduce it. And I'm also using uh, sap green. So let's begin. Now, manganese blue or cerulean blue, I went to manganese years ago. I like it a little bit better. I'm using manganese blue with a little bit of ultramarine blue in the sky with a touch of the raw sienna to help gray it. It was an overcast day and I'm not worried about too much with the drips and all. I'm going to add a little bit more yellow to this as it goes down towards the horizon. And I'm going to paint right through the pine trees and so forth. And going back and mixing with a little bit of ultramarine blue and a little bit more of the raw sienna. Changing the color of the sky just a slight bit than what it is in the photograph. And I'm going to maintain some of the white of the paper here. Oh, you've got tons of people. Tons. Yes, you've got um, Gary Price, Jan, Linda, I said that before, Bud. Bud said hello, that Bub, ha ha ha. Yes, Bub Mearsman. Yes, Liz from Nebraska is back. Hello, Liz. Um, let's see, Carol's here. Carol, that was the sweetest email you sent, Dale. Wendy's watching. She's out in Chesterton, Indiana. Okay, I am mixing up the combina different combinations of the sap green, ultramarine blue, a little bit of the burnt sienna because the pines do have a little bit of warmth to them, uh, especially at this time of year when the needles are turning. And I am going to wet this just a little bit with the pine tree because this pine tree I want a little bit more diffused. And also a little bit darker down towards the bottom. It's going to overlap the house just a little bit right here. And I'm very carefully painting around certain parts right there. So I'll go back and add a little bit more ultramarine blue to this. And I'm going to take just a little bit of the water spray here not too much and I'm going to take a little bit more of the burnt sienna and add this to it and a touch of the ultramarine I know you can't see my palette this time but I'm not over mixing the colors this is a fairly large pine tree up against this building here and then I'm going to move over Cross the house a little bit 
You missing your paintbrush because your dog was with it. Thank you. So I'm going to take some ultramarine blue and some of the manganese blue. Now manganese blue is a little bit more, I don't know what you call a sweet color, um, but I'm going to work in some coolness on the roof and I'm going to go right down into the building a little bit. A couple cast shadows across here. And then I'm going to go right back into the tree here with the sap green ultramarine blue and a little bit of burnt sienna and I'm going to start up at the top and this is fairly dry up here you always feel with this with the back of your hand so um Carol Peters is watching from Manaqua hi Carol hello and your nephew and godson Ben Popovich is watching hello Benjamin uh Suzanne's watching uh, Carol said, so thank you so much again. You're welcome. Uh, Deb is sharing the stream. Good. Please, please share. And also, if you don't, if you haven't liked this page, please do. Not just the post, but like the page. So I added a little bit more burnt sienna in at this point up towards the top. I want a little bit more warmth that, because there's a lot of warmth in the building. And I want that to kind of move the eye around a little bit. Now we add a little bit more ultramarine blue to this. And I'm allowing it again to overlap the building somewhat. And I'm coming down again, overlapping the building on the right-hand side. Now, I, there is a, I think it's a some sort of shrub that's down here, just down at the bottom. I'm going to leave that alone for right now. And I am going to go in and add a little bit more burnt sienna and some of the um, manganese blue for a little bit here in the background. And I'm gonna add a little bit more burnt sienna to that. Maureen is watching and Sue Malone is watching. Hi Sue, hi Maureen. Now I have done this demonstration for my students that I teach class with, um, teach class up in Lake Zurich, and I've done it at Elmhurst. I think I've done it down at the Palette, but most of you have not seen this, so that's why I'm doing it at this point. And this is the first pass through the painting, which is the kind of the most important part because you got to get the right parts in the right place. And if you don't do that, um, the rest of the painting begins to be more of a struggle. Uh, Suzanne Dreyer's got a question for you. She wants to know when you're going to put the alligator in. The alligator, okay. The alligator goes in last in the frozen pond down here. Somebody asked me yesterday, what are you going to paint? And I told them. It was Suzanne that asked you. I know. I'm sorry. Cottage in the snow and with pine trees and so forth i told her with an alligator also phyllis kingsland hi phyllis how you doing dear she has a question she said she wants to buy this demo first offer 150 dollars plus postage i haven't finished it yet you may change your mind <laughs> so you can see i'm establishing the big areas and I've included or tried to include the house also. There is a garage in the photograph way back here, so I made that quite a bit smaller. Sylvia 
said she's watching closely, never can quite duplicate, but will keep on trying. You have to keep on trying. And Phyllis answered back to, probably not. Oops, sorry. Probably not what? Well, we, you said you haven't seen it yet. You know, you, she may not want it. Your painting, your demo. I see. Okay. Do I hear $200 for this? <laughs> That's funny. So, while I've got this drying in the background here, I'm going to go into the building very briefly. And I'm going to look at uh, some of the burnt sienna that's in the building, a little bit of the ultramarine blue. And I'm just going to go through the building so that I'm trying to get the idea of the imprint of the photograph, the colors, the values. So that it has some sort of semblance of an idea of what's going to happen as we move through this. And it's very large basic areas, nothing too small. Then I'm going to take the raw sienna and I'm going to run it along the bottom of the building here because the top of the building will get darker. And now for the snow itself out in the foreground. We had quite a bit of snow up there this last Christmas. So I'm using a combination of the manganese blue and the ultramarine blue. I don't want it quite as cold looking as it is in the photograph. And allow things to bleed together. It's not that big of a problem. I always try to keep my edges as soft as I can for as long as I can. Okay, Phyllis said yes, 200. Okay, looks beautiful. Uh, Becky Craft said I just joined and she wants to know if your paper is wet. My paper I wet up in the sky to begin with. And then I worked wet on dry. In other words, the brush and the pigment were wet and the paper was dry. So I'm running this across most of the foreground. There was a ridge here from the road plow. Um, I'm ignoring that completely. And Steve says, just watching takes me back to his old college days. Steve who? Okay, let me look. Klemeyer? Klemeyer? Oh, Kelmer. Kelmer, sorry. Sorry, Steve, I'm bad with names. So while we got that drying, just for a moment, I'm going to take and I'm going to put in a little bit of color for this shrub in the foreground. And we're going to leave it dry for a moment. So we'll take a commercial break and I'll show you one of my other favorite books. This book is by Richard Schmidt. He's an oil painting, but he's still good, you know. Um, he has done a few watercolors, but um, actually I've had, I had this book for about two years before I realized the picture on the front was done in gouache. In other words, the gouache was translucent and opaque, and he built it up in different levels and so forth, which I've done before also. But the book, I don't know what it retails for now, but the prices keep on going up, but he's got beautiful paintings in here. Some of them have a step-by-step -step, uh, process to them, but not many. I think if I looked this morning, it was 114, 124, 149, something. Okay, somewhere in that area. Yeah. But he was a graduate of the American Academy back in the 1950s. Um, I did have his daughter in class um, one year. I ended up flunking her, unfortunately. When I met Richard, I introduced myself as I'm the instructor that flunked your daughter. And he goes, oh, yeah, I remember your name. Um, not very nice man, though. He's probably one of the t top five um, painters in America right now. But he's outstanding. So.
So let's get back to what we're doing. I think it's probably dry enough because I wasn't working too wet. But this gives you a basic imprint of what's going on here. And I'm going to take a little bit of water on this natural sponge and I'm going to pull up just a little bit in here for that shrub just to soften it a bit. And I am going to also soften this up just a slight bit. You know, Bud is watching this from the U.S. Virgin Islands. Yes, I know. <laughs> he retired at an early age. Looking for my paper towels. All right. We got the basic imprint, which is what you need to do in a watercolor, not paint things piecemeal. Um, you want it to hold together right from the beginning. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in and I'm going to manipulate a few things first before I go any further. I want to pull out a few lights up here against the porch. And I'm going to begin with this pine tree again. So I'm going to have the ultramarine blue and the sap green along with a little bit of the burnt sienna to help grade a slight bit. And I'm going to begin by painting this lower part here that receives less light. Down towards the bottom and then slowly build it up. Now I'm not going to have too much going on over here because I don't want the eye falling off over here too much. Okay, I know I'm not going to. V-A-I-S-H-A-L-I. Vashila. She's watching from India. Hello. Long ways. What Thank time you. is it there? Thank you for joining us. So as I go up the tree a little bit, I'm going to warm it up a little bit. Just a slight bit. And I'm not going to, like I say, put too much into this tree over here. I treat it like a character actor in a movie, not too much emphasis on it. Okay. And I'm going to spray just a little bit of water on this to soften it. Then I'm going to take a little bit of the green on the toothbrush, and I'm going to add that to this up in here. And that's about all I'll do to that tree for the time being. Lots of things I wait to see what the adjustments have to be done. So I'm going to go off to the tree in the middle because I want to establish my darks on how they should look according to how dark my darks will be here. And if you don't get your darks dark enough, your lights will never ever appear light enough. So you have to constantly battle between the lights and the darks to get them to look correct within this frame of reference, not the photograph. I always tell the students, don't paint the photograph, paint the painting. It's uh, 11 p.m. in India. Oh, staying up late. And I'm going to hit this with a little bit of water to soften it so that there's not too much attention because sharper edges will attract more eye contact than sharp, or sh sharp or softer edges. I can speak. Okay, coming on down here to the pine tree. And you'll notice as this dries, you'll see the values change quite a bit. Um, they dry a lot lighter. This is why you can see how dark I may have put this down at the beginning and where it is right now. So again, I'm going to add some water to this to keep it softer looking. And I'm going to add some of the manganese blue to it 
just to cool it up just a little bit. So I come down to this shrub that's at the bottom and I want this dark that is overhanging the house. You want to go 250, Phyllis? <laughs> um, I want that dark overhanging the house dark enough so that it pulls that house out a little bit more with the lights that are going to be on it. Uh, Joseph is... Um, inspired here in the Philippines. Oh, warm. Well, we've got fairly warm here today. Okay, coming across to the pine tree that's at the far right, I'm going to warm that up even a little bit more than what it is. And I've, I've simplified the composition quite a bit. Um, there's things I took out that weren't necessary. Some things I did put in, but mostly it's more important what you take out than what you put in in any painting. And I'm going to go back and forth on this a little bit. Um, also having a variety between the pine trees does leave the eye a little bit nicer. So the question from the shower. Oh, I'm so bad at this. From the young lady from India. India, okay. She said she in the lockdown, she does one postcard size watercolor every day. Can I try this tomorrow? Hope there's no copyright issues. No, there isn't. It's here for you to reproduce. It's free and to have fun with it. It'll be posted on Facebook tomorrow. Well, actually or the by, not tomorrow, but by the middle of next week. We, um, if you go to his website, which is dalepopovich.com, and we'll have a blog post written. We also post the video with some editing so you can actually paint it in three phases. That'll be up next week. But if you go to his website, you'll, um, and look at, it's called the Field Journal. That's Dale's blog post. Um, if you go through this Facebook page, you'll notice that we sent out a PDF of the photo of his pencil drawing on paper and his paint colors. So if you um, go there, but don't worry, no copyright issues. We just want everybody to paint and be creative. During and this time. Phyllis said she'll go to 250. All right, 250. We have three. And I'm she terrible. said, wait, I'm building against myself. It's beautiful. <laughs> Phyllis, you're cute. Phyllis is one of my palette and chisel students who's made great strides in watercolor these last, this last year. So what I'm going to do is that you can see these pine trees starting to come out. The background back here is a little weak, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of volume to it. Not much because I don't want it to come forward. Remember, a good background is one that stays back, doesn't come forward. But I'm going to add just a little bit, not much. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to include the garage within this. But if you add too much in the background, it will definitely come forward and supersede what you've already established in the foreground. And these are non-pine trees back here. They're just regular trees. Some of them hold on to their leaves a little bit longer. Now, what I need to do is to assess the next step, and that is going to be going into the house. And what I need to do is I need to establish the 
darker ducks in the upper part of the house to look at and I'll show you I'll show you the photograph so you can see it I want to get into these parts of the house I left off this little portico here over the house here I moved the garage further back and I'm adjusting these masses here because we got all these darks going on in here I'm going to add a little bit of dark later on but I don't want to go too quickly on it so I'm going to take the burnt sienna and some of the ultramarine blue and I'm using mostly core colors today that's Q-O-R and wonderful watercolor so I'm going to go in here and I'm going to start painting I'm going to go for a little bit smaller brush here um, I want you to know that Julie Boyd is watching. She's in Australia. Welcome. And the copyright issue was brought up again. On the documents, we put the copyright on there because we don't want people to teach the same thing that he's teaching. But if you're taking the class and repainting it, there's no problem. But it's we don't want other art instructors to copy his lessons. Anything you want to add to that, Dale? Nope, I think you said it all. My wife is my technician and advisor, and she's uh, she's the brains of the operation. I am just the brush. Another question, where's the alligator? The alligator is still under the water. So I'm going over the front part of the house that was facing us here. And the reason why I have this division in here is that the lower part looks like it was applied brick um, where the upper part is wood so I'm going to intensify the color a little bit on this corner so it pushes off into the dark I'll probably have to have one more application on this but it starts to give a sense of the relationship to the landscape and I'm also going to enter a little bit of the green in on this too because I don't want it departing from what's going on around it because it does influence quite a bit of the color. Um, Liz is wanting to know about your brushes, what size brushes you're using. Well, what I'm using right now is a number two art sign. The ones I were using before were Cat Tongue by Meaden, who we get through Amazon. Um, if you go to my link, it states the supply list that I have. That's his Facebook page and go to Supplies and Library tab and you'll find a wealth of information there that we're always working on to build. So now I'm going to enter a little bit more blue um, with both blues that I'm using in for the cast shadows. And I'm going to clean my, I'm constantly cleaning off my mixing tray. Otherwise, you'll get dirty color, which I just did. Um, so I've got the ultramarine blue and the manganese. And I'm going to cast shadow this part of the roof here. I need to gray that down ever so slightly. It's still a little bit too sweet. So I add raw sienna to it. And down here, this is in total shadow. So the tree itself is casting shadows across the snow on the roof. And over here, we're getting a little bit more shadow. But you can see where the tree is, or the building is now starting to come into focus a little bit more. And I am going to take the toothbrush and spray a little bit of water on the bottom of this. Just to soften that so it goes in. I'll add any other description I need to as I move through this. And I have a little bit of white paper here that I don't want. 
I'll worry about the cast shadow going across the building later. This white spot back here has got to be toned down completely that it falls back. Now that I have the building set in, I'm going to take the manganese blue and the ultramarine blue. I think I got to switch water containers here. Every once in a while I have to get clean water because otherwise your colors that you want a little bit more pure will end up getting dirty just from the water. So Sylvia said not only are you a big presence in the Midwest, you are now international with all these lovely people from different countries. Um, that's nice to know. Barbara Vasper is watching and so is Mary Ellen Seagraves. And Mary Ellen wrote, can you explain what you mean by sweet color? Okay, if you give me a second here, I will. Um, and Barbara Berry said, thank you for, um, for another awesome demo. Good. Um, sweet color is, is lighter, very intense. And if you take a look at, this is the cobalt blue. This is the cerulean blue right here. It's very light, it's very cool. And then we have the ultramarine blue, which is this one, which you have cool, something in the middle. It's fairly cool. Blue is always cool anyways, but we have different temperature variations of blues. This, the manganese or the cerulean being the coolest and kind of sweet looking. You know, it, it has a different look to it. So you always have to kind of tone it down a little bit. Then you have the ultramarine blue, which is your darkest and less cool blue. It's, it's what you call a warmer blue. Um, there's different variations on every color um, that you can use. It's either warmer or cooler, more intense or less intense. Um, you have to always take into account what colors you want to use before you pick up the brush and start painting. And these are the ones that I chose. Now I could have gone having a relationship of cobalt blue, which is a less cool blue than the manganese, and it would still show up fine. But in a snow scene, you always got to kind of use um, a cooler blue because of the white of the snow. And snow is cool, so is any white object. But so and Mary Ellen, in his blog post, will take a photo of paint on a watercolor paper, those three colors, and go into the explanation again. So that will be on his blog post this week. And if you are not on his mailing list, just private message us or go to his website and sign up at the top of the homepage. Now what I'm doing here is, I had mentioned last week or the week before, I don't remember when, this is a foundation brush. I got it at a dollar store. I wanted to experiment with it. Uh, and I used it at one of my workshops I had up in Monaco with the Lakeland Art League. Uh, if you ever move up that way, that's an art league to join. A lot of wonderful people that are very interested in the arts. But I ended up buying, I think, I, all of them. They had about eight of them. And they used them in the demonstration I did. What I'm doing here off to the left is I'm poking holes in the bottom of the trees as you would see light coming through. And I'm going to manipulate a few things here and there as we go. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to add a little bit of pine branch. There's an area right in here that I want to kind of fill in just a little bit. Just to emphasize the top of that roof. Nothing too much. And then I'm going to go into the building again. So you can start to see the contrast of what's in the shadow, what's in the, in the light. So I'm taking the ultramarine blue, the burnt sienna, and a little bit of the raw sienna. And I'm going to go into the shadow of this building.
and very carefully model it. And I'm trying to change my temperature or color or intensity just a little bit. And as I turn the corner here, uh, out of the shadow area, I want to give it a little bit extra push of some of that warm color so it flips around into the shadow. Now down in the bottom, since we do have shadow on that, uh, on that side, I'm taking the raw sienna with a little bit of the previous mixture, and I'm not going to show too much of a separation in the shadow. You want to make your shadows semi-interesting, but don't uh, make them too interesting because the shadows show a little bit form they're not flat I'm going to tone this down because that light is bothering me and now I'm going to take the pure burnt sienna and add it to the side that is receiving a little bit of light and as it goes into the pine tree I'm going to darken it a little bit and also the overhang And Deb, just wanted to thank you so much for your support of the Lakeland Art League and all the Wisconsin Northwoods Arts. You're welcome. It's a wonderful, wonderful place and a lot of great people. They've been posting their artwork online lately uh, as different challenges, which they're really coming up with some nice things. And... Um, Bob said, is the foundation brush shaped like a small hairbrush horizontal handle, not like a traditional paintbrush? No, it's, it's a found, makeup foundation brush. Um, why I am attracted to trying to find different things, but it's nylon, but it's very soft. And I can go in here and wet it, and I can go in here and I can lift the reason why I use it on this paper, which I should have explained, um, is that this is a very soft paper. I'm using indigo paper again, as I did last week. And the indigo paper, uh, you can punch through it if you abuse the paper a little bit too much. And I did do that on my first demonstration here in the studio with it. So I'm very careful about softer paper. Some watercolors are very soft where you have watercolor papers that, like arches, you can pretty much go in and, and mess around with and not do it too much harm. Um, Bob said he's having a hard time seeing it on his phone. If you go to Dale's website and look up the first... Uh, Watercolor Escape Saturday's blog post. I can send you a link to that afterwards. We actually have a photo of the brush. So, and then also, Barb, I'm going to address this to everybody that's listening. Um, Barbara is having a hard time. She's getting an echo with Dale and has signed in a few times. Is anybody else getting an echo? Please let me know. Thank you. So now I'm casting some shadows across the building here from this tree. And that will help keep it softer. I'll re pull out this window just a little bit so it can be remain to be seen. I'm going to go to the raw sienna for the bottom part of the house that is bricked. And keep it on the casual side. All right, Barbara, it looks like it's your internet connection because I have three people that said they don't have an echo, um, that the audio is clear. And Phyllis said that she went to CVS and she bought a foundation brush, or she they have foundation brushes for $12 or a little bit more. So go to the dollar stores first. Go to the dollar store. At least you, Phyllis, didn't get where it looks like I did, why a guy is buying foundation brushes. 
Um, I did buy false nails years ago. And the lady gave me a strange look, looked at my wife, Mary Lee, and my wife says, yeah, he's not with me. Um, so I'm giving this a little bit of softness up at the top. Um, Wendy found one for $3. I got mine at the Dollar Tree, tree in Eagle River. Um, it's a long ways to go for a dollar brush, but um, they have dollar trees down here, and I'm sure they're the same price. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to add a little bit more darkness right here up against the house. The uh, foundation brush is, is uh, bristles, not a sponge. Synthetic. It's synthetic bristles, but it is soft as soft can be. Um, and it lightly scrubs the paper uh, and doesn't do, any, do it any harm. Now I'm coming over to this tree here. And I want this to overlap the building just a little bit more. Um, Deb is watching um, on Facebook. She's got an app for her TV. Okay. That she downloaded and she can watch it on her television. Big screen. Yes. And um, let's see. Millie. Uh, I would say that today's format with the stripe down the middle rather than filling the full screen makes viewing on her phone much smaller. Well, we can't do anything about that, unfortunately. But we'll get this fixed by next week, hopefully. Yeah, if you guys tuned in late, Facebook's changing their format. And if you pushed a couple buttons, you could make your phone record horizontally. Well, I tried it yesterday because we always do a dry run. And it wouldn't let me do horizontal. So I tried it with his phone. And then with my laptop, it worked. But then this morning, we tried it again. And it didn't work with anything. So we went to the vertical format. Just in case you're wondering. So I'm putting in some essential darks to punctuate the house just a little bit more. Some cast shadows that need to be for the eaves of the house. And I am going to take a little bit of this coolness of the manganese and the raw sienna and I'm going to hit that on that bush in here a little bit more raw sienna Jan wants to know if you have multiple toothbrushes ready um, or do you just do a quick water swoosh between colors I just clean it in the water it's something that um, I've been using for years I have a habit of using some different types of things once in a while. Uh, it wasn't something that my instructor used. And usually when I'm painting, I'm getting up, moving around a little bit. Um, I'm toning down some what I call sky holes that I don't want these bright lights coming through. You don't want to trap a light between a dark. And I'm going to emphasize the roof here a little bit more by toning this in a little bit. It doesn't have to be anything, but it pushes that house out a little bit. <clears throat> And again, I'm cleaning the palette just so that it's remaining clean and my colors do not get muddled. And I'm going to put it, some more cast shadow in here. 
I'm using a little bit more ultramarine blue back here because it is further back away from the foreground. As I come forward, I'll be using more. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take an oil painting brush. First, I have to tone this door down over here. It's too, too white. And I'm going to pull out the window that is facing the light a little bit. Get a little bit more light in it. I'm going to pull out a little bit of light in the shadow area, but I'm going to tone that in later. But I need to have it defined just a little bit more. And what I'm going to do, which is not in the photograph, I'm going to add a few birch trees over here to help break up, break this area up a little bit. And they're not going to be too prevalent, but I want them to be a little bit more, bring in a little bit of light here and there. And usually birch trees, when they're in a clump, they grow away from one another. And that will just help Bob, yeah, this one's going to be um, vertical, but we're going to figure something out. If it means that it's not live and he records it and we post it at noon. Because the um, it's nice when you have it horizontal because you could see him mixing his paints on the side. Unfortunately, the... Facebook decided to change something. I don't know what or why, but they did. And I'm going to take a little bit more of this manganese blue and I'm going to start putting it in the foreground here. I have to put a little bit more out. But you can see on how it's starting to develop. I really have no, done nothing with the windows as we're talking except pull out to define the the shape, but I want to get a little bit more, some accents in here and over here. And put a, hope this is, yeah, that's dry enough. And I'm going to tone this window down completely. And I'll worry about the definition of it in a little bit here. Now, now Millie, are you on a Mac or are you on a PC? I'm putting in some ridge boards up in here that I saw needed to be added. They're the fascia of the building a little bit. You can go up into your menu bar, into your browser, Chrome, Safari, and you can increase the view size. If you're on an Apple, I believe it's a command option, and it'll take it up in size. Taking the toothbrush here to kind of move some of that blue in to the building a little bit more. Then I'll take a damp brush and maneuver it around just a little bit. Still waiting for the windows to dry, but I do want to pull out the brick here at the bottom at this point because it's getting more direct light. And I'm just going to tease a little bit in here just so it drifts off. You don't need to define the whole edge necessarily. Um, you want edges to be lost and found, and I'm allowing this to be a little bit more lost. And then here at the corner, to make it turn the corner better, I'm pulling out the light so that you wrap around the corner. This can be kind of muddled in here a little bit or diffused. I've just made it semi-interesting, but I don't want to overdo it. Um, again, I'm going to go through the foreground with more blue. 
So I'm going to take the manganese blue and some of the ultramarine blue, but a lot more manganese this time. It's going to be a little bit cooler than what's up near the house. And you'll see the painting change quite a bit as I add these cool passages up in the foreground. step back and take a look at this for a minute. I very seldom, very, very seldom paint from start to finish without getting up, taking a look at what I need to do. So you never really want to paint from start to finish in, right in front of your painting. You want to get up, take a look at it from a distance once in a while to see what the whole picture looks like. I always get my students to stand up, take a look at what's going on, and especially what other people are doing. You can always learn from your fellow student. find the windows I think this is dry enough in the doorway just a slight bit to add some of those uh, extra darks on there got to take a look at what I've got here just a slight bit nothing and I'm keeping it very abbreviated I'm not trying to um, to find the whole doorway or the whole window just trying to see where things could be just to show a suggestion of things I'm going to put in some other trees over here that come down to the ground to give this a little bit of depth over here on the left and I need to pay attention to the right hand side here I am going to very carefully and very softly break this area up and a little bit in here because if you take a look at how the trees are positioned they're too even here which I had seen that before I started painting but I need to add a little bit of Diversion for the eye. And you don't want things to be even. It seems like our natural tendency is to have things a little bit too even all the time. So I'm going to put a small pine tree in the middle to help break that area up, this particular area right in here. And I'm going to have it a little bit warmer and I'm going to play it off of this side of the building a little bit more. Now I'm going to start adding some blue because I will make this tree stronger. And that helps fuse things together a little bit more in the middle. So I'm going to take and build up the tree that's out in front of the house just a little bit more. And where it overlaps the house to push the house back a little bit and start modeling the darks that are underneath the pine boughs. It allows to push out the light ones. Any other questions? 
Say hi to Cindy Forbes. Hello, Cindy. How is Arizona? New Mexico, I think. New Mexico. What Somewhere is it, down Cindy? there. They just went and locked on. They just did? Yeah. Everybody's in lockdown. Well, Becky know. Kraft said that she discovered she can watch this on her large screen TV with Apple uh, TV. That's cool. Yeah. I'm going to take a little bit of the manganese here and I'm going to add it to the tree in the front and then add a little bit of raw sienna to it. And a little bit of burnt sienna. Cindy told us it's New Mexico. Okay. She said it's chilly and brown, but we are safe with lots of hugs and kisses. And uh, great class. Good. Thank you for watching. It's almost like those days of me standing in your doorway at Frankel. We talk about Happy Meals. I got a little bit too much of a straight line going right here, so I'm going to break this up. I want the snow to kind of remain soft. And I am going to now go in and pick up this shrub in the middle. And it will still have hints of those colors on it. Millie, we're glad you're back. Her connection froze up on her. And then add a little bit of the blue back into it. So I keep on going back and forth. And you notice I'm not handling any large areas at this point. Um, there's a couple things I need to do here and there to illuminate a few things, to soften a few things, and I'm constantly looking at it from a distance. Now I want this getting a little bit more light than that. This is a little bit further or closer to us. And I want this to Come out just a little bit more on that side. I'm using an old oil painting brush and I'm using it very, very carefully. Um, I don't want to punch a hole in the paper. This is wonderful paper, but I don't want to punch a hole in it. Hi, Sharon. Um, yeah, I'd say he's like maybe more than three quarters of the way done. But I'm Almost. so glad you could jump on board. You can always watch it later on in the replay. And technology, normally we shoot this horizontal, but Facebook this week was playing with their formats. And unfortunately, it had to be vertical. Well, we're a little bit more than two-thirds of the way done. I'm adding a little bit of the manganese blue up into the trees to give it a little bit of sparkle and a little bit down here and this will give it a little bit of live, liveliness to it now this is almost dry enough to do this I'm going to add the lower stems or trunk to this bush here. Allow it to diffuse as it goes up into there. Because the top is still on the wet side. And I've got a couple of trees back here behind the house to put up.
and I want to pull out a little defining lights on the roof of the house. And over to here. And just along the ridge here. And down on the side over here just to define it a little bit more because it is quite snow packed on this roof here. different things one can do at the end but don't do too much too quickly um, you can get yourself in trouble that way thank you I'm just adding a few accents of some intense color here towards the end here. I'm going to add a few defining things with this here. A couple later trees in the background. A suggestion of it. I don't want them popping out. I'm going to drag that color up into the sky a little bit and then feather it off up in here with just a damp brush, maybe a little bit of color. Put a couple accents of color here and there to pull this in. clean a little bit over here so I get a little bit cleaner color that I can go in and do a few little things here and there. Any more questions? Okay, I'm looking. Don't forget to like his Facebook page and remember either private message Dale or go to his website at the top of the home page. There's a place where you can sign up for his uh, mail, you know, to get his newsletters. We sent these images out yesterday. So if anybody wanted to have them on hand, they'd have it. And then remember, we'll have a blog post later on this coming week where we'll run through with the um, with his demo notes, um, stills of things, talks about um, supplies and stuff. So all kinds of goodies. I'm pulling out a little bit of light with the X-Acto knife. Just to give this a little bit of snow laden on the bush here out in front. I don't like to use it a whole lot. But occasionally I do use it. One thing about doing this at this stage is that I don't go back over it. Um, because if I put watercolor on top of this, it will come out very dark. Unless that is the desired look that one wants. Almost there. Pull up a little bit of light in there. 
I'm going to take one more pass in the front. This needs to have a little bit more casualness to it up front. And I'm going to make a little bit of snow, but not too much. I take the white gouache that I have out and I'm going to add a little bit of the blue to it and a little bit of the raw sienna, just a slight bit. And I'm going to very lightly make it snow. It's kind of a gray day anyways. Not too much. And I'm just lightly flicking the toothbrush. Carolyn said, thank you for the demo. She's going to give it um, her best try. And Kathy just signed on. Hello. So let's take the tape off and see what it looks like. This is one thing I, on this paper, I don't burnish the tape down very much because I have torn up part of the painting. Yes, every Saturday at noon Central Standard Time, we're going to have a Facebook Live demonstration until we're all out of quarantine. So this is what we ended up with. It almost feels like Mother Earth has told us to stand in the corner because we did something wrong. So that's what we're doing. So there's the final painting. And this is what the photograph looked like again. So you can see this. Okay, put it underneath it. I don't know if you can see no, put that. No, it, put it under. Yeah, just like that. But... I lightened up quite a bit. I made it a little bit more airy. This was, we didn't have but one day of sunlight, and that was the day that we we're leaving after two weeks. So I had to do a lot of little shifting around of light, but I like the light airiness of what's going on better. So thank you for joining me. Uh, I, I, please join us again next week. Why don't you introduce Poppy again? I'll introduce our daughter again. She's gotten a lot bigger since the first time I've done this. And that was only two weeks ago. But this is Miss Poppy. She's got a little bit of the devil in her, but she's a pretty good puppy, right? Okay. Um, but she's a good girl. We've had her for about two months now. And uh, she started off with 10 pounds. She's about 18 now. She eats like a regular Popovich. So Sylvia said thank you. Bud said thank you. Millie said thank you. You're welcome, everybody. Judy said thank you. Um, Cindy Forbes said she will be back again. It'll be nice to see you again, Sandy. Thank you again, and have a good week, and stay safe. Bye-bye.